Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I want to show you what I found when I was cleaning my studio today. I found this old set of Yarka watercolors, and um, it was really hard to tell what they were from the pan, so I did a little swatch out. The colors are gorgeous, and I thought, hey, I, I'm going to do a tutorial with these today. I know um, some of my viewers use Yarka paints. I got these, they were a steal of a deal, about 10 or 15 years ago, oh, had to be probably around 15 years ago now, uh, they were like $24, and uh, they're really, really vivid, vivid paints now, they're way more than that, but they do still have them available. Um, so we're going to, we're going to draw a sweet pea, and I'm just going to really kind of make it big. I'm working on um, Cotman watercolor paper, actually. I was just kind of looking through my filing cabinet and realized that I really need to uh, go upstairs into my flat file and... Uh, start restocking my watercolor papers because I buy my papers in uh, big sheets and um, usually in bulk because um, I used to have a studio, a big studio where I taught lessons. So back then I stocked up on lots of full watercolor sheets and I was always so afraid to have them down here in my basement studio. I was afraid they would get um, moldy or mildewy or get damp and be ruined because they are an investment. And um, so I've kept them upstairs. And I'm so glad I bought them when I did because now paper is so much more. My I got Arches paper that I paid $2 a sheet for. And now it's like 5 or 6 for like, you know, through the discount websites. It's, it's insane how much the prices have gone up. All right. So I've got my little sweet pea bud drawn here. And I'm just going to put kind of like a stalk. And I think I'm going to throw in a background. Um, the sweet pea hasn't really opened up too much, so it's going to be it's going to be a pretty fun, easy, easy little painting. I'm going to just spray this with water to make it a little simpler. And I'm going to use a one inch flat or angular, I guess. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to. Oh, I need some more water on there. That's not nearly enough. There we go. It doesn't want to move. Throw some yellow in there. You can wet your brush with your paper. Wet your brush with the paper. You wet your paper with your brush. Strike that. Reverse it. Oh my goodness. It is, uh, kids are going to be off the bus any moment. It's one of those days where it's like, where, what, what happened? Where did the day go? <laughs> oh, I came downstairs. I cleaned my studio today. You know, it occurred to me the other day that someone just popping into one of my tutorials, listening to me gab about what I've done with my day. They're probably just like, what is wrong with this woman? She's just... Gavin and talking and has nothing to do with what she's doing on the painting. What what's going on here? This is crazy. I gotta find some of the YouTube to, <laughs> YouTuber to watch. A little yellow ochre here. So I think that's Hooker's Green. I don't have any. Uh, I did swatch out my colors, but I didn't have a uh, color list of what was in the set. Um, it looks a little bit too too cool of a green to be sap. So I think it's Hooker's Green. And I'm just making a little rough border. I like to keep. I, I like those rough edges. Sometimes I will just uh, mount it on some matte board and then matte over that, so I actually leave the edges. And somebody had asked me, "How do you get those uh, rough edges?" Well, hand, uh, mold made fine art paper will have the deckle edges on the sides, and then I just tear it down to the side I want because, um, and then the, all the sides will have those pretty edges. All right, I'm going to blot the flower with a fresh paper towel just to get any green out of there. This is going to be a quick, easy, easy picture. It started to rain. We're supposed to have softball, a softball game tonight and baseball practice, but I don't think that's going to happen, quite frankly. All right, we need something kind of of a... And the other reason I swatched it out, I couldn't really tell what my colors were. Uh, this, this is a really pink... Um, pinky red and it just looked exactly like the other uh, red that was on there so I'm glad I did that and I'm just gonna put just a little bit of that purple uh, I think this is dachshund and violet which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing so nobody needs to tell me I'm mispronouncing it I I'm pretty sure I am so what I'm gonna do now that I've got this basic wash in here I think that I will let it dry I'll speed things up with a heat gun but I will pause it so you don't have to watch me do that 
All right, it's mostly dry. I left a puddle kind of up here on the edge. If you look at that, that's going to dry and give me a cool ruffly bloom, which will be interesting because my background's kind of big and plain. So, hey, I use all the help I can get there. I'm using a number 10 round brush, I believe. 10 round, yeah. Royal Aqualon. I really like the Aqualon brushes. Um, and you can find them in affordable sets, which are really nice. Um, I know that, like, our local AC Moore carries them. And... You probably have a local art store that carries them. The nice thing about, um, well, there's, 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 there's benefits to everything. The nice thing about having a local art store, which we don't have anymore, is that you get to see everything and try it out and ask advice. But the, uh, the good thing about the big box store is that you can actually use a coupon. You get a set of, you know, I think the sets are 20 bucks, which isn't bad, honestly. Um, and then you can get 50% off, which is nice. All right, so I just threw in a little shadow there, and then I'm just going to go in. I'm just using a damp brush, and I'm going to soften it and just pull it out, pull the shadow out. And I'm going to bring in a little bit of that, um, that pinky red, probably a magenta. I'm not sure. Or it might be red rose deep. Uh, something like that, a pinky or red. If you don't have those colors, you know, use crimson. Use alizarin crimson. And you can mix your purple with alizarin and crimson and ultramarine blue. I just think it's, every once in a while it's fun to um, it's fun to try, you know, a new palette. I think I was fortunate. It seemed like back in the late '90s, early 2000s, a lot of companies had um, a lot of companies had come onto the scene, come onto the market here in the United States. And I think like Yarko was a Russian company, and um, you know, different different uh, a lot of different products. And so I'm just uh, painting this petal here with clear water. Um, and so if you took a chance on some of these companies, you could get some really good deals right at the beginning. Like I got tubes of Da Vinci paint, the huge tubes of Da Vinci watercolor, which are now like $30 for like three to $5. It was crazy. So, you know, if you're, if you're starting out, if you're willing to take a chance, um, if there's a new company offering artist quality paints, um, you know, take a chance on them because if it's artist quality, it's usually going to be pretty good. And if they're a new company starting out, you're usually going to get a really good deal. I got my first, I got a set of 12 of the Yarko ones through uh, a promotion from Jack Richardson. And then, um, and then when I saw the, uh, the set of 24 for like $24, I jumped on it because I already knew the quality was good. All right, make sure you have your little credit card scraper handy because we're going to use that in just a second. I'm just helping pull some of that color out over here to the edge of the petal. These are really nice paints. I, I always like to try new watercolors. Watercolor is my passion. It's my favorite medium. I get asked a lot to do uh, acrylic tutorials and um, for, you know, I'll use acrylic paints in certain for certain things, but I, I tend not to just, just paint with acrylics, but I think I might, I have, I have one, I have a couple actually in mind to do, so probably when I'm back from the stamp show. I don't know if I'll do any videos this weekend. I'm not really planning on it because I'm only there for one day, but we'll see. I'm not making any promises. All right, and I'm just going to pull some little veins. This is really going to scribe the paper and make that purple sink in and make it look really realistic and also make really short work of putting some detail in for us. Look at that. Can you see that? We've got some really nice, uh, nice veins. Why don't I zoom in just a little bit so you can see it. Hopefully now you can see it pretty well. All right, and so what I'm doing here, the way I'm working is I'm skipping around a bit so that I don't have, um, so the colors don't bleed into each other while I'm working. Get a little bit of water. And a little bit of this purple here. This is a pretty decent amount of mixing area. My palette has a little, um, a little flap that hooks on, so you do have a decent amount of mixing area, which is it's handy. It's compact, so it's good if you were taking it to a class, and it's also good if I'm like when I'm doing my tutorials here because it's not taking up as much space as my regular uh, painting palette would. The one that the painting palette I use if I'm not doing a video because I have more space on my table because I don't have a tripod on there. All right, and then just a little. Just gonna, I'm gonna paint this one in here. I'm actually gonna let the colors run a little bit. I want it to look like a watercolor after all. Somebody asked me, um, how come you don't do more detailed watercolors? And the reason for that is basically just a limit on my uh, my camera. It records stops recording after 20 minutes, and I don't have time to edit too many videos a week. I edit one or two maybe a week. The other are just up on YouTube Live, so. 
Uh, so that would be that's the reason for that my I always start off my paintings loose and they get and then if I'm going to put more time into it then I make them more detailed at that point um, so the beginnings of my this is how the beginnings of my paintings always start they're uh, loose and bright and washy that's just how I work all right I'm just going to go in with some of this lemon yellow right here on the stem and I'm going to pull some of that down into the top here like the hip of the flower. Gotta be careful. I don't want to get it into the the purple, or I'm gonna, just gonna make mud. Oops, I almost stuck my my thing in my 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 uh, paintbrush in my tea. That wouldn't have been good. Pretty sure these contain cadmium or something nasty. Probably that yellow does. I think that's a cadmium yellow. I'm just throwing some of this in here. And I'm I'm removing any excess water from my brush because I don't want it to go and bleed where I don't want it. Just give it, it looks like a little hat, doesn't it? These little little bits here. Catish. Alright, and just extend the vine up. And then I want to put little fuzzies on there, so I'm gonna go back in my credit card scraper tool and just kind of drag out little little fuzzy marks. These are fuzzy little fuzzy little stems. See, just kind of pull it out. And then go all the way up and down the stem while it's still wet. You do have to you do have to do it while it's wet or it's not gonna work. And you can't really you know you could re-wet it but it's not gonna it's not gonna work quite as well. So here I'm actually pushing it's actually pushing some of the pigment out and giving me some white marks. It's dragging some out and giving me some darker little hairs on there. Just uh that's what you want. You want that kind of like catching the light or shadowing in the light. You go, you want that to give it a real realistic look. Take your time on this. I'm going more faster than I would um, if I wasn't doing a video because, you know, the time thing. The time thing and the fact that kids are going to be out the bus any minute. All right, I'm going to pause it, I'm going to dry it, and we're going to finish it up. All right, uh, now I want to show you a little mistake I made here. I didn't realize it when I was scratching my veins. I should have gone all the way up to the edge of that petal, so I'm going to have to paint some a little bit of something in there uh, to bridge the gap. But I just wanted to point that out so that when you go ahead to do that yourself, you don't make that same mistake. I'm going to throw in some washes on this petal and I'm just just working with very watery paint on dry paper because I don't want to have to stop and dry that again. Just blotted my brush off there. And I'm going to do a more cooler purpley wash over here. And I think I'll scratch in just a few little little veins here. The scribing really shows up well in this cotton paper. It's kind of neat. It is not 100% cotton. It's a, I think it's a blend of cotton and uh, and uh, wood paper pulp. That's why some paints are, some papers are much more expensive. It's because of the cotton content. There we go. It's singing children upstairs. I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. Alright, I'm just throwing a little bit of uh, shading here and there. There we go. And put a little bit in there. And I'm just basically dragging color around. I'm just kind of playing with it until I get the uh, the uh, blend of, of uh, colors, the monocolors colors that I like. I can go back in with a damp brush and just soften. And I also want to go in there and add a little bit over of that uh, color over here so I could just kind of bridge over to my little veins that I drew. And maybe I can even drag some more lines in there. I don't know if I want to. I might just leave it like this. And I want to wash over that, maybe just even drag some of the, that color right around. A little bit over here on the back. It's nice to have like, if you have a, a flower with a bunch of leaves like that, to just kind of drag colors around, try to pull out the differences between the petals. Oh, let's see. Oh, 
computer's talking to me. All right, um, and now I think I'll just add a little more detail to the top of the flower here. Now this is all done with a pretty big brush. Um, if that, if a uh, number 10 feels a little too overwhelming for you to use, go ahead and use a smaller one. There's no brush police out there that, that are going to tell you not to. I think it is good to use the uh, the biggest brush that you can handle though, because then you won't be, uh, you won't fuss too much. You'll be uh, covering more area and um, and I think it really helps build confidence when you use a bigger brush. In there with that. And a good quality brush, you can use it right on the tip and get quite a bit of control with it, even though it's so large. Let's drag the uh, hard colors around. There goes the furnace again. Because my gosh, it's June. The furnace is going to keep the house above 60. There we go. We've had some nice weather, but I've got to say, we got, we've had a few soggy days this week. You can appreciate it when you get it, I guess. I'm just adding a little shadow along the stalk here, and it's grabbing some of those scribed lines, making them look extra detailed and fun. Nice. And then I'm just going to throw my, my uh, name in there. It's good enough for me. It's done enough for me. I had fun painting this. I hope you, uh, you enjoyed it, and I hope you feel inspired to try it as well. I probably, you know what, I think I will switch to a smaller... Well, you know what, let's see if I can sign my name with this big brush. I was going to switch to a smaller brush, because the number 10 one is... Kind of big, we'll just see. Yeah, it's alright. I'm not great at signing my name anyway. 1 4, 2014. Alright, there you have it. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this tutorial, I would appreciate a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.